Hello there everyone, this is Cole from the Arizona Science Center. I'm currently at the Science Center right now because I'm about to come at you with a brand new science activity. Now, we just surpassed another holiday this year, Halloween. And Halloween is one of my personal favorites, if not just because of the costumes and the amazing decorations and all the passion that goes into that. But, of course, the one thing that makes me love it more than any other holiday is the massive amount of candy that there is just wherever you go. Now, my biggest issue with the holiday, if I had to name one besides getting scared by really scary costumes and terrifying uh, decorations and whatnot, is that every year I end up having a ton of candy that gets uneaten. Because, you know, you can only eat so much candy, right? Uh, when that happens, a lot of that candy tends to go to waste, and I hate to see things go to waste. So I thought, well, why don't we turn that candy into a science experiment? So today we're gonna to be going over a really cool science experiment that has to do with some candy that you probably have at home right now, uh, and you know, using some other household common objects. Now, before we get into the science, let's go ahead and go over what you're gonna need for today's activity. First and foremost, you're gonna want a cup of water, you're gonna want a piece of tin foil, a spoon or pipette, something to move water with. You're also going to want to, uh, a strip of uh, coffee filter. Paper towels work just as well, but uh, coffee filters are the way to go. This is a torn off piece. You're also gonna want some toothpicks, a large bowl or cup, a pencil or a chopstick like I have right here, and a little clip on that as well. You're also gonna want some salt. I know this is a lot of salt, you really only need a little bit. And also you're gonna want either M&Ms or Skittles. Now you're probably wondering, Cole, why are we using M&Ms or Skittles? Well, M&Ms or Skittles are kinda unique with candy. Uh, essentially the way that they, well, are, is they have their candy on the inside, right? So with M&Ms, it's a little bit of chocolate, and with Skittles, it's that like chewy taffy stuff. And then on the outside, there is a hard sugary coating, and on top of that coating is some colored dye. So one of the coolest things about candy is not only are they very, um, you know, tasty and sweet, they're also very sweet to look at. And so today what we're gonna be doing is we're actually gonna be looking at the dyes that go in to making some of our favorite sweet treats. Now the cool thing about the dyes that go into our candies like Skittles, M&Ms, et cetera, et cetera, is they aren't just made from one color. A lot of the times, what ends up happening is there's a very long process that goes into actually making the exact shade of green or of yellow or even of red that you see and consume. Uh, and oftentimes, there's a lot of weird ingredients to go into that as well, but that's a video for another day. So, let's go ahead and jump into the science of this activity. All right, so let's go ahead and start off. So what we first have to do, if we want to see the different dyes that go into the colors that we see on our candy, is we have to extract some of that dye. Now again, the outside layer of our M&Ms and Skittles is just made up of sugar, and sugar is soluble or dissolvable inside of water. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our dropper or a spoon, whatever you got, and just go ahead and space out these drops really, really wide so they don't overlap. You're gonna put a little bit of water all over your tinfoil. We're using tinfoil because tinfoil won't absorb the water, right? It's a metal. Metals don't normally absorb waters, or liquids, I should say. We got a decent amount right there, so we're gonna be getting a decent amount of dye. And now we're gonna take our candies and we're gonna very carefully drop them onto the water. Now what this is gonna do is it's going to basically melt the part that touches the water and allow us to access some of that dye. You can of course add some more water, just remember you can always add things, you can't really take it away too well. But we got that and we're just going to let this sit for just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and actually apply a little bit more water on these three over here. Just a smidge. Just a smidge over here so we have a decent amount to work with. I think it's already working. All right. Let me go ahead and I'm going to flip this so you can see the dyes a little bit better. Oh, Got to be careful. This was maybe a bad idea. <laughs> We're going to see the dyes a little bit. So let's go ahead. We'll move this a little bit center for you. And let's go ahead and start taking away our candies and see what we got left. Well, looks like we got some green dye there. Maybe we should give that just another minute more. Let everything really start to dissolve. Let's see how red's doing. Red's looking pretty good. So I think we can start with red. We'll set that off to the side. We got our orange. 
right there. Maybe leave orange in for another minute. And essentially what we're going to do next as our colors start to come out, as our dyes start to come out, is we're now going to take our coffee filter or paper towel, again, whatever you have, and we're going to be taking a little bit of our color and applying it down here. All right, so let's go ahead and check our colors one more time. Let's start with green. Green looks pretty good to me. We got our brown right there. Yep, we see we have all of this dye, all this color coming out of it. Now, the science that we're doing is a technique called chromatography. And chromatography is used by scientists to help understand what substances are made of. Basically, you're tearing apart a substance to understand what's inside of it. So we're going to take our toothpicks now, and I'm going to go ahead and dip this into the green. See if I can't get a little bit of green on here. All right, so as you can see, we have some color on our sheet right here. This is all the dyes from our candy. What we're gonna do now is we are going to cause the uh, dyes to start to separate. And the way we're gonna do that is by something called capillary action. Now capillary action basically is what happens when water moves against gravity due to it moving through a material. So if you've ever gotten like a drop of water on your shirt and you've seen it like kind of crawl up your shirt a little bit, that's capillary action. We're gonna be using that right now. So first we need to prepare our container, either your cup or your bowl. What I want you to do is you're gonna use a little bit of salt and pour it into your water. Now this is a fourth of a teaspoon, so I'm going to put in about a teaspoon, so that's three and four, and then we are going to mix this all up. You can just use your pencil or whatever, dry it off in a second. The reason why I'm doing this is because sometimes the dyes using these candies are actually soluble to um, our uh, salt as well, not just water. So this is actually going to help us break down that color even more. All right, so it looks pretty good to me. Next, what you're going to do is you are going to take your salty water and you're just going to pour it just enough on the bottom of this container. You don't want it to be too much, just kind of filling up the bottom of it just barely. All right, let's go ahead and get ready to put our dye in there. So take your pencil and you're basically going to attach it to the dye using your clip. Let's make sure that's about the right height. Well, that looks good to me. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and drop our filter or your towel right in the water. You can always add a little bit more water if you need to, but make sure that the bottom gets all, all wet. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and wait a few minutes. We're going to edit this part out and we're going to wait for the water to climb up. This might take a little bit of time, so don't worry if it does. Alrighty, so we've given our dyes some time to separate. We've allowed that water to crawl up our filter. And if you look right here, you can see that they actually kind of moved a little bit, right? So because as the water particles were moving through this, they were also moving the dye particles as well. And I know it's really bright right here, but I'm sure you can see that there's some color bleeding out. Over here, we have some new blue colors. We have our yellow kind of stretching over here. I think there's a little bit of red right here with the orange, of course. And so there you go. We can now see what these colors, what these dyes were originally made up of. We can see the different parts of them. All right, friends. There you go. That is your candy chromatography activity. We hope you have a great day wherever you're at. And as always, I will see you in the next video.